Let's understand how the pressure varies when the container is accelerating. And this case is very different from when the fluid flows. So in this case, fluid is not flowing. It is stationary inside the container, but the container is accelerating. The, the acceleration of the container, suppose this container which is shown, can be broadly classified into two categories. One is when the acceleration is in the horizontal direction. So when this container accelerates rightwards or leftwards, that is the first category. And the second category is when the acceleration is vertical, so either up or down. And any other acceleration that is at an angle, suppose the acceleration is in this direction, can be, uh, can be taken as the superposition of two cases. One is its horizontal component and the second one is its vertical component and then you can merge it and then use vector algebra. So in the first case, we deal with when the acceleration is horizontal and secondly we'll deal with when the acceleration is in the vertical direction. Suppose this is, uh, this is our container and it is kept on some platform. This platform accelerates upwards with an acceleration A. Now this acceleration can be positive or negative. If it is positive, then the acceleration actually happens in the direction that we have assumed. If it is negative, then the acceleration happens in the other direction. So it can only take two values, either positive or negative. So let's assume that it is some A, which is, uh, which can be anything. And there is a uh, liquid inside this container. Suppose this is the liquid surface. And the density of this liquid is rho. This container accelerates upwards and we want to find out how the pressure between two points, let's say this point A and this point B changes. Is it, uh, suppose the, the separation between them is H, this is H. Is it still rho G H as we have discussed before or is it going to be something else? Let's investigate it in depth. To find out what we are going to do is we are going to assume a cylinder. We are going to assume a cylinder whose, uh, whose two surfaces, whose two flat surfaces are going to enclose this point A and this point B. So the cylinder will look something like this. This is one flat surface. And this one is the other one where we assume that this area of the surface is very very small so we'll call it da really small so really small okay and and the other the other surface also has the same area da uh, these surfaces are flat as in they are parallel to the plane of this base what is the volume of the cylinder so the volume of the cylinder is nothing but h into da base area into height so that's how much amount of liquid is contained inside this hypothetical container this this is uh, our system now which which we want to focus on now let's do a little bit of dynamic part on on this system we're going to apply all the forces that are acting on the system and then we'll equate it to uh, ma uh, just by applying newton's second law now, as, as you can see that along with this container, this volume is also going up with an acceleration, same A. And if the pressure at point A is PA, then let me draw it. Uh, so this is a little exaggerated version of the same thing. So this is this. This point A, let's assume that the pressure at this point A is PA. And the pressure at point B is PB. Now we know that forces due to the pressure have a direction. Pressure itself is a scalar quantity, but the force that leads to pressure is a vector quantity. And we know that the force is going to act perpendicular to the, to the surfaces. So in this case, uh, if I draw the force profile of this on the flat surface, the force is going to act in this direction like that. And it is going to be mathematically pressure into area, pressure here is PA into area DA. That much force acts downwards on the upper part of the body. Okay. And the force from below is PB into DA. You can call it as FP, which is equal to this guy. 
and FA which is equal to this guy. Forces from the sides will cancel each other out. So the force profile will look something like this. The forces will act perpendicular to the surface and their, their magnitude is going to increase uh, because you know that as you go down the pressure is going to increase. So the force is going to increase. From this side also the force profile will look something like this. And as you can see uh, the, the, all the forces from the sides are going to cancel each other out. That is why this cylinder is not accelerating sideways. It is only accelerating in the upward direction. But in the upward direction the force, the net force is not zero. Because this guy here is accelerating upwards with some acceleration A. Let's equate the forces. Let's find out the net force. The net force and we are assuming upwards as positive. Upwards, if the force is acting upwards, then uh, I'll, I'll assume it positive. And if it is downward, then I'll assume it negative. So if I write net force on this volume, considered volume, then it is going to be upward force, that is PB into DA, minus downwards force, which is FA, which is PA into DA. And there's one more force, that is gravity which is acting downwards and the, if the mass of this, uh, the, the liquid contained in this volume is m, then the gravitational force is mg minus mg. And this is net force and according to second law, the net force should be, uh, should be equal to mass into acceleration. Pb, Pb uh, minus Pa, let me take Da common, Da minus mg and what is mass mass is density into volume so minus rho and the volume is da base area into height h into g this must be equal to mass into acceleration and again mass is density into da into h into a so this f net will be equal to ma this part is the mass here this part right mass is density into uh, volume and this is acceleration here right here acceleration a from the equation i could see that da is common everywhere so i could cancel da just i'll just remove this da just i've taken it common here and from here pb minus pa which is the pressure difference which we were interested in is equal to rho gh plus rho a h and and you can see that the pressure here is is no longer rho g h this is very clear from this equation this is little more than rho g h if acceleration is positive so if you can take rho and h common then we get g plus a. and that is the pressure difference we have when the uh, the container in which the liquid is contained is accelerating in the upward direction and, and the same will happen if the acceleration is negative, just that the value will reduce. Why this is happening, if I want to give you a little feel of it, think about the scenario where you are on this platform and the platform is accelerating upwards. What would happen? W wouldn't you feel a little heavier? So if I, if I place a weighing scale below you and if I measure your weight in a scenario where the platform on which you're standing is going, is accelerating upwards. In that case, the apparent weight uh, that the weighing scale is going to measure is going to be more than your original weight and the opposite will happen if the platform is accelerating downwards in that case you will feel lighter and your apparent weight will be lesser than your real weight and we know why did the pressure come into the picture in the first place the pressure is coming due to the weight of the molecules that are above a point one more thing i want to point out is that if this frame just moves with the constant velocity upwards or downwards then there will be no change in the pressure and one must understand this from Newton's uh, Newton's laws point of view uh, in the case when the when the uh, container is moving with the constant velocity then nothing has changed so any frame that moves with constant velocity with respect to any inertial frame is an inertial frame and we are assuming earth's frame to be very close to an inertial frame in the second case, the platform on which my container is kept will accelerate rightwards with some acceleration A. Now, if I try to imagine this, because 
I think that uh, while carrying a glass of water, if I walk too fast, then I could see the layer of the liquid getting little disturbed and it tilts to the opposite side uh, from the direction of walking. Sometimes when I'm carrying milk in a container, I can see that when I, when I move, when I try to move little fast in the horizontal direction, then the surface of the milk tilts towards me. And I know that if I try to move too, too rapidly, then this is going to fall off. So from that intuition, I can tell that this surface is going to tilt. And if the acceleration is rightwards and it is positive, then this surface uh, will tilt something like this. So this will tilt something like that. This is the initial case. And when the container starts accelerating, then this is the final case. And again, let's take two points. So again, let's take uh, this point A and this point B. And let's see how much is the pressure difference between these two points. I know that when the liquid was contained in a container at rest or moving with a constant velocity, then the pressure at these two points are equal. But is that the case here also? One thing I can see clearly is that this point A is is uh, at a little more depth than this point B. So this depth, let's call it uh, H1, is more than this depth H2. So intuitively I can tell that uh, maybe they're not at the same pressure and we'll have to see. So f to deal with it mathematically, we again take a, s a cylindrical volume. Now again, the basis will be at the points where we are interested in and this is the curved surface of the cylinder. In this cylinder, suppose the mass of the liquid contained is M. And uh, pressure at this point A is PA, so force from here is PA into DA. Again, these are very small areas, DA. And the force from this side is PB into dA. The considered volume is not going anywhere vertically, so the vertical forces are going to cancel out and we are now interested in the vertical forces. In the horizontal direction, if I look it from the ground, then this mass is going rightwards along with this container with the same acceleration A. Now what we have to do is just uh, apply Newton's second law, F net is equal to Me. So I'll assume rightwards to be positive and left first to be negative. So the force that is acting in the rightward direction will be positive and the force that is acting in the left direction will be negative. There is one force mg which is vertical and I am not interested in the vertical forces. So I am not listing that out. It's not, it doesn't mean that uh, there is no vertical force on this. There is some but the main point of concern here is horizontal forces. So f net in the horizontal direction is equal to m into uh, acceleration in the horizontal direction. F net is going to be P A into D A minus P B into D A, which will be equal to mass of this thing into its acceleration A. Take D A common, P A minus P B is equal to mass is density, the density of this fluid is rho, density into volume da and yeah i forgot <laughs> let's let's say that these two points are separated by a distance uh, x so rho da da is the base area into the height which in this case is x into acceleration a da da gets cancelled out and pa minus pb is rho a x. This time the pressure difference is not zero because the fluid, this part of the fluid is accelerating rightwards. So P A minus P B is rho A x. And there is no acceleration in the vertical direction. So the pressure at A, pressure at A and let's assume on the surface there is air on top and the atmospheric pressure is P naught. So the pressure at A is P naught plus rho g h1. Similarly, pressure at B is P naught plus rho g h2. 
So PA minus PB from this uh, approach will be PA minus PB will be equal to uh, if you subtract uh, this P0 plus rho GH2 from P0 plus rho GH1, P0 would get cancelled out and you would get rho G H1 minus H2. And these both are equal. So if I equate here, I'll just equate these two rho G H1 minus H2. Rho, rho get cancelled out. A by G will be equal to A by G. Uh, will be equal to h1 minus h2 divided by x. Now geometrically this is a very uh, this is a very interesting thing actually. h1 minus h2 if this is h1 and this much is h2 is this height and divided by x which is the distance of separation between points a and b is this. And in this right angle triangle in this right angle triangle this side which is perpendicular divided by this side which is base is actually the tan of this angle theta. So tan of this angle theta is equal to A by G. How interesting. If I even want to find out uh, by how much angle the surface is going to tilt, that angle I can easily find out if I know the acceleration and the gravity at that place.